Hey guys, I'm David, the founder of Ultimate Survival Tips, the survival show podcast and your guide through this new video series that we're kicking off today. Over the next few weeks, through 11 lessons, we're going to take you step by step through something almost every knife lover wants to know how to do, and that's how to make a knife on your own. Welcome to lesson number one. But before we get started, smash that like button so you don't miss out on any of the lessons in this 11 part video training series. And go grab the outline notes and materials checklist for this course for free at ultimatesurvivaltips.com forward slash knife making 101 for a limited time. Okay, today we're gonna launch this series by going through lesson number one, knife making gear and supplies. We're gonna take you step by step through the gear and equipment you're gonna need to start making knives today. Let's get started. All right, guys, so as we get into this first session, I want to introduce Joe. Hey, Dave. Hey, man. How are you? So Joe's back. He's been in a few videos on our YouTube channel. And we're gonna step through what right here? How to make a hidden tank puko out of an old file. Oh well, yeah, and in this video we're gonna talk about that knife right there. We're gonna try to we're gonna show you all of the tools <laughs> that you're going to need to make this knife right here. Or one very, very similar to that that you're gonna make in your own shop at home out of a file. And then more specifically in this video we're gonna talk about the gear, the supplies, the tools that can be helpful to do so, right? That's right. Why don't you step us through and I'll just kind of be Vanna White here and uh, show. Hey, Vanna White's got nothing on you, man. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> All right, so safety first. Uh, there will be some times when you're using, uh, when you're making a knife when you don't want to use gloves, but generally, uh, especially when you're using high temperatures and your hands are in danger, use gloves, safety first. Because Joe uses them all the time. Mm. All the time. <laughs> you should use gloves. But even more important than that is iPro. So use your iPro. You got some cheap iPro like what I've got, which you works, or some fancy smancy iPro like what Dave has. Either one will work. This might probably work a little bit better. Uh, respirator, when you're sanding, you don't want to leave the shop with wood boogers because you get wood boogers, right? And it's just nasty and cruddy and you don't want to get that stuff into your lungs, especially when you're grinding on steel. You don't want to get metal boogers at all because that stuff will get into your lungs and you just will not get out. So a respirator is a super great idea. Yep. I would say a necessity, at least mask up. Ear Pro, when you are sitting on that grinder or you're running that grinder for minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes at a time, that decibel level is going to be higher. You don't want to wreck your ear hearing. Um, at all, so use some ear pro. Ear plugs will work as well. Yep, and other clothing. And non-flammable clothing. Non-flammable clothing would be a really good idea. When you are, especially grinding metal, we're going to be throwing sparks. High carbon steel throws a lot of sparks, and I've burned up lots of t-shirts. Well, I haven't burned them up, but I put holes in lots of t-shirts. So a shop apron, uh, something made out of canvas, denim. Wherever you're going to be hit with sparks is a super good idea. There's Dave's shop, shop apron. Mine's hanging up in the shop. And you can see where I've burned holes in ground into it, which I'm glad. And there's actually duct tape on the other yeah. side because, <laughs> duct you know. Duct tape the, patches, the, yeah, man. They work. Right, yeah. We're, We're going to show you different ways that you can make this knife with minimal power tools. Um, but you will need a, at least, a very least, a cordless drill or a hand drill. We're going to use a drill press, but you could use one of those. This, you've got one just like this. This two by 32 and there you go, Vanna, got it. That is a two by 42 sander. Um, we'll Probably see. the most versatile tool in most. Oh yeah. If you're gonna spend a couple hundred dollars on this, this is the tool to get. And not only do you get the uh, the grinder, the sander, you also get you that also flat get wheel right that, there. That flat wheel, so that can come in handy when you're shaping your handles. Yeah, it, it will come in not just in knife making, but in all sorts of different uh, projects that you will use in your shop. Um, if you do not have one of those, now this is a Nicholson file uh, on a 
piece of rod. I'll show you why it's duct tape on this piece of rod right now, but a little bit later, I'll show you why that is. If you don't have a two by 42 or even a one by 30 sander or something bigger, you can use a file and a grinding wheel. These are 30 or 40 bucks. You can yep. probably find them on Amazon even cheaper than that. You can, you can use that as well. Dave, Dave taught me how to use this when it comes to knife making, yep. didn't you? Yeah, so when we finish the knife, you can get, you can clean things up and get kind of an interesting finish with a significant grit sandpaper and a little palm sander. That palm sander will really help because your first time through on making a knife, your bevels might not be exactly the way that you want them. Yep. It won't be that perfect look that you want, but that, that uh, orbital palm sander will really help normalize everything. Yep. Good. So what you're going to need, we're going to make a knife similar to this. Which that knife was made out of a file. This was made out of a file. Yes. This was actually the second knife that I ever made. Nice. Yeah. Didn't turn out too bad. Uh, out of a file. And the best place is to find an old file, Dave. Uh, grandpa's basement. Yeah. Uh, yard sales. Uh, consignment consignment shops. shops. Yeah. Junk antique shops. Yeah. Antique shops. Yard sales. The old files are the best. I would, yeah, a I Nicholson file. Yeah. Um, this one is a distant porter file. Um, it doesn't matter what uh, grit is the only word I can think of right now that that file is. Um, just as long as it's a hardened piece of steel. The larger the file, the more time you're gonna take to heat it up. So I would recommend going with a smaller file and probably even a thinner file for your first That's project. a really good idea, yep. We're gonna to need to make a handle. This is a piece of cherry off an old hunk of furniture. It's just about the perfect size for a knife handle. And you don't need to use cherry. You can use, I would recommend a hardwood though. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Cherry, walnut, maple, ash, ash. oak. It's sure. If you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and wander through kind of their hardwood section, yep. you might even be able to find, and I was able to find a couple different parts, uh, smaller pieces of hardwood that they're selling for just two or three bucks a piece and you can get lucky with some really nice oak yeah. or ash. And you might be able to get a couple handles out of those too. Exactly. Yep. We might just show you how to make a handle. Joe really wants to do that. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> it's so creative, but the, this is a piece of firewood and it's got a really amazing grain to it. So you can do it out of that Well, maybe well. we'll do a bonus section. Bonus this. section. Yep. Okay, this is uh, our forge that we're going to use and they made it out of an old five gallon paint can with plaster of Paris and perlite on the inside. Gardeners use perlite. It's the white stuff that you find in like potting soil. Yep. Uh, for under $25, I was able to put that together. Maybe in a future video we can show if it works. To do that. Yeah, it does. Regular brick or fire brick. You can actually make a pretty decent forge out of fire brick. I've done it before and showed guys how to do that. So if you don't have a forge, uh, you can make one out of brick or fire brick as well. And that metal's gonna get really hot. Really hot. So you're how going hot, Joe? About 1,500 degrees? 1,550 degrees, we need to at least get into that. Yep. So you also need something to be able to move that metal around and, and not burn your finnies off. Yep. So even though you're wearing gloves, you're gonna to wanna to be using some tongs. Uh, I got these at a yard sale for pretty cheap. Or hard to find, and they're not cheap if you're going to buy them new. That's right. Uh, <laughs> or better. Uh, a wrench, or yep. Benzomatic. Uh, that's right. I would recommend this uh, Benzomatic torch. I'm not a torch expert. I've never really used lots of torches in my entire life. I can just tell you that because this is regulated, it will throw a hotter flame than what a regular old torch head would do. So uh, you will not be able to get the metal up to temperature just using a regular torch head. So a uh, burns a matic torch. Trust me, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Texted Joe late one night and said, this isn't working, Joe, what's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, a couple things to invest in. I would invest in that. Again, it will come in super handy in many other projects as well. Uh, a, a vise on a bench would be wonderful, but you would, can get away with using C-clamps. Attached to my C-clamps is a magnet. You'll need a magnet. This is a fancy smancy magnet. Uh, any magnet will do. In this 
nasty red plastic bucket, all that is is water. As you're grinding, you're not gonna be putting it in the water after it comes out of the forge, but as you're grinding that metal away, that metal will get hot. So you wanna, uh, especially, uh, yeah, you wanna be able to keep that cool so you're not burning your hands again, even if you are using gloves. And here in this old metal container out of my grandpa's garage is canola oil. You want some of that because that's what you're actually going to heat treat your blade when it comes out of the forge. I'm using Danish oil. Again, that was a recommendation from Dave. Using Danish oil, you can also use what, mineral spirits. For this is for handles. Yep, for handles, for finishing. Tongue oil actually is my a new favorite. New of favorite. Mine. Yep. Uh, and that will make that cherry just absolutely pop and yeah. be super, super pretty and beautiful. Five minute epoxy. Uh, you can get that at Lowe's, Walmart, Home Depot, ordered off from Amazon. Uh, two part epoxy would be great. Or you could also use Gorilla Glue, right? Yeah, uh, super glue, Gorilla Glue gel. The gel stuff works particularly well. It gives you some time to kind of set the handle in there if you have to make some modifications yeah. or adjustments. Yep. Uh, some things to measure with. You won't be doing a ton of measuring, but you will be doing some. Uh, so a square tape measure. You're also going to be making some marks. So, uh, and not just marks on wood, but marks on metal. I dropped my soapstone uh, or magic markers will be good. Uh, blue painter's tape or duct tape will come handy in a pinch. And this is the perlite that I was telling you about earlier. Uh, this will help with the annealing process. I think I bought a five pound bag from Lowe's for like six or seven dollars. Yep. And that will be handy in the annealing process. We'll tackle that in the next video. So this is a lot of stuff, Joe. It is a lot of so stuff. So what we're gonna do for this class, this series, is we're gonna put together a list. Every video, be able to get that, check the video description on ultimate survival tips if eventually you're actually purchasing this course. We're gonna have a checklist with everything and some links. We'll put some links in there too because some of this stuff's actually a little bit hard to find if you don't know what you're looking for. The other thing too is you don't need everything on this table. We're gonna walk you through and show you the, the basic, basic yep. stuff too. So it's kind of a bonus that you'll be able to make a knife with just simple tools. All right, man. All right. That's good. Ready? Let's move on to the next video. Sounds good, brother. We've just taken a look at the knife making gear and supplies that you need to start making knives today. Join me next time for lesson number two in this series where you will discover how to prepare your file to be made into a sweet knife. For your convenience, I've placed a link to the full knife making course outline PDF with bonus notes and materials checklist above in the description or at ultimatesurvivaltips.com forward slash knife making 101 for a limited time. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any of the lessons in this 11 part video series. All right, everybody, I think that's about it. Until next time, I hope to see you on the other side. And remember, be prepared because you never know.